Well, both, both the story and our second reading today have something to tell us about our third source. Can we, can we look at that third source again? Wisdom from the world's religions which inspires us in our ethical and spiritual life. Wisdom from the world's religions, which inspires us in our ethical and spiritual life. Both of those, the story and the reading from the Bhagavad Gita, the telling of the Bhagavad Gita, can inspire us. Both of those are wisdom and can inspire us in our ethical and spiritual life. Both are, are things that teach us how to pay attention to our spiritual life and how to be better people. And there's a lot of that in all the religions of the world, all the religions of the world. And we can, we can take down the slide now, I think. And yet, as a minister, I find this, this source of faith the most difficult. I'll tell you why. This is, this is, this is part of the participatory section of the, of the sermon. So do you have any idea how many religions there are in the world? Go ahead and put in the chat how many religions you think there might be. Oh, I'm getting some good answers here. How many, how many do you think? I see as many as there are people, thousands, a thousand, several thousand. Those are really good guesses, more than a thousand. 96, oh, 940,000, not quite, not, not, not 40,000, I'll tell you that, but thousands. So at last count that I saw when I looked up, there are about 4,200 or 4,300, so 4,300-ish religions in the world. That's quite a lot. And so as a minister, it's not that I find it difficult to be inspired. I don't find it difficult to be inspired. I find it difficult because there are so many and as a faith leader, I can't possibly, I cannot possibly be well-versed in all of them. And yet I'm asked to serve people both inside Unitarian Universalism and in a broader scope in my chaplaincy in Civil Air Patrol, I'm, I'm asked to serve people who are fed by so many different sources of faith. And there's so much richness out there, so much. So how can we do this faithfully? How can we learn from the religions of the world, take the lessons that are offered, learn from them faithfully without exoticizing or fetishizing them? Well, let's, let's talk about that about that. Some of you, some of you drink deeply from the well of religions that would come under this source of faith. We have, we have Buddhists among us and um, some who have taken the precepts and practiced faithfully traveling the eightfold path. We have Taoists among us and I have colleagues who I know are Hindu and Muslim and, and I even met a, a, a Unitarian Universalist Zoroastrian once, which is rare because that is not something you can convert into. You have to be born into that faith. And these are just a few of the many religions that are practiced in the world today. But if you're not practicing one of these faiths, if this is not the path you have chosen or has been chosen for you, what can you learn from one of these faiths? What can you learn, say, if you're not a Buddhist, what can you learn from Buddhism without disrespecting it? What can you learn from another faith without disrespecting it? Um, 
so this is a this is a a picture of me um, in a Buddhist temple in Cambodia. I'm the one with with hair, and I'm sitting with a Buddhist nun, and she has just given me a blessing. And you can see the the blessing on my left wrist. She's tied it on my my wrist. And I'm gonna actually I'm gonna Seth. I'm gonna get back to this in a moment. Um, I want to tell you a story first about um, things we that that aren't respectful and how I learned to to do respectful things. Once upon a time in a church long ago and far away, I was co-teaching, co-leading a class on the Bhagavad Gita with another minister. And one of the participants in the class said, she was very sorry to learn about the gods as they were in this class because she had a picture in her mind of how she liked them to be. And she just really didn't want to learn what they were for real. She wanted the picture in her mind. Well, my friends, that is how we don't do it. That is exoticizing or fetishizing someone else's religion. That is play acting. And that is not who we are at our best. And in our culture, we've been taught that it's okay to do that. That white Christian culture in the United States has been the dominant culture and everything else is something that we can make a costume out of and play at and that's not, that's not as serious as, as we are. I remember, I remember substitute teaching in a first grade, grade classroom once and the, the regular teacher had a board and said, what's the difference between myth and religion? And, and she had real religions on the board, they just weren't being practiced. And, and I, was, I was hurt by that. But she was teaching these little children to internalize that idea that other people's religions are something that we can, that we can make costumes and jokes out of. So that's the first thing. We have to relearn. So how did I relearn this? So when I went to that Buddhist temple, I learned the rules first. This was, have you ever done a thing on your bucket list? I, I wanted to go see these temples in anger for a very long time and this was a bucket list thing. And I learned that I was going to have to be covered up. It didn't matter that it was summer. The rules there are strict. And I was gonna to need to be, to have my arms covered and have my legs covered. And so I made sure that I was because I was in somebody else's house. Another way I learned to do this was that when I was in seminary, I was required to take a class in a consortium so a class, a, a consortium class, a class in someone else's seminary. I chose, I chose the Dominican House of Study. I chose to study with a bunch of Dominican brothers who were studying to be priests. And what I learned from that experience was I wasn't there to change them. I was there to learn from them. That can be really hard for a Unitarian Universalist, let me tell you, to talk less and listen more. So that by the time I made this trip to visit this temple, I learned to talk less and listen more. 
So I'm not a Buddhist. I haven't studied, but I recognized when I stepped in, I recognized the holiness of this place. I recognized the blessing. I was able to mimic the motions and that in so itself is a form of prayer. I wasn't mocking the motions. I was following what I was told to do. And that is the beginning of learning. And listening to the readings and taking down our walls. And say, oh, yeah, that speaks to me. Maybe saying that speaks to me, that's like in my source, in my taproot, that sounds like this thing that I use in my taproot. So I'm gonna ask, um, ask Seth to put in the chat right now, the answer garden link. So we're gonna make our word cloud. And my question to you is what is one world religion that you would like to learn more about? What is one world religion that you would like to learn more about? I've chosen to learn more about Islam and Hinduism. And I still, I still know very little, very little compared to true practitioners of those faiths. I probably know more than the average non-Muslim or non-Hindu person on the street, but I still know very little and I watch and I learn. And I pay special attention to cultural misappropriation. It's very important that we don't assume that just because we like something, we can take it. especially not if we're going to bend it to our own way. For example, have you ever heard anybody say, well, I practice Christian yoga. There is no such thing as Christian yoga. Just as there is no such thing as Jewish Christmas, there is no such thing as Christian yoga. Yoga is yoga. You either do it or you don't. When I, when I was a little girl and was enrolled in judo, interestingly, because I was attacked after school for being Jewish once, and so my parents enrolled me in judo. We practiced every aspect of the judo. We had to pray or meditate before the class. We knelt down and bowed before class. I remember the ceremony of getting my yellow belt. Sadly, that was as far as I progressed. The teacher dropped the belt in front of me as we were kneeling at the end of class and the whole class had to wait while I took off my white belt and put on my yellow belt. He was a white American teacher, but he felt it was important to preserve the traditional ways. So when we learn about other faiths, it's important to remember if these are not where we come from originally, if this is not the faith that we were born into, that we are learning from someone else, we are the students. We can take the wisdom and learn from that, but we cannot take it, bend it to our ways and say, oh, I know more than you now. 
there is much wisdom. There is much wisdom in the world's religions. Pay attention. Don't play at it like the thief in the, in, in the story of Rabia. Work at it. Dive in. Explore and pray. Who knows what you will discover? Who knows where it will lead you? Perhaps it will just be pieces of wisdom that you take with you and remain with the taproot where you started. Or perhaps it will lead you on a new path. Wherever your path leads, we will hold it in Unitarian Universalism. We will hold you here in this community. And that is the beauty of this faith. What will you learn? Namaste.